Hi guys. So I just wanted to get on here real quick and talk about my kitchen journey, my kitchen project a little bit real quick. Um, I've had so many messages about the products that I've used, the process that I've used, um, and I'm just gonna kind of go by step by step of what I did and um, share that with you guys. And I just think it's a little bit easier to communicate all of that through here in one nice fluid message versus short um, chopped up little stories and maybe like a lengthy post. So here we go. Um, so my husband and I have talked about painting our kitchen since we bought our foreclosure and it is a beautiful kitchen and I am so blessed to have such a gorgeous open space and um, I'm sure there's you know several people out there that would love to have a big space like that too. So it wasn't that my kitchen was bad or wasn't really in rough shape. It just could use a little love and a little bit of paint could go a long way with just transforming the space, which um, is now what we have. So um, we had talked about painting, you know, from day one when we bought our house, but I was like, there's no way, you know, that I'm ever going to attempt to paint these myself. Like if we take on this kitchen with all these corners and all these little spaces in between the windows and all of that for painting purposes as well, just the walls as them, those themselves too. Um, I was like, oh, we are going to hire painters to do the cabinets. Like I'm not gonna take that project on. That is overwhelming, that is scary, that is intimidating. So that's how our conversations have gone for the last um, several months. So then we started talking about replacing countertop, just the countertop, and just investing you know, a little bit of money there, and that would brighten up the kitchen, that would transform the kitchen space. Um, and that was kind of the route we were gonna go. Well then, after talking to a girlfriend here on Instagram, um, and I started picking her brain of her painting process and what she did to get her cabinets done and they looked gorgeous. It really kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe I could do this, you know? And then I reached out on Instagram, um, and talked about, you know, asking if anybody else has painted their cabinets and what they did, the process that they, they used and the steps that they did. My, my biggest dilemma I think was sanding versus priming or do I need to do both or, you know, what does that look like? So um, anyways, after getting so many responses from so many women um, on Instagram, I um, felt just more at ease about the project of like, I think I can tackle this. And we have this mid-December um, countertop install date, and my goal was to have it all done by then. And then that got my mind thinking, well, if I'm going to have these brand new countertops, I need to do the cabinets now and not wait a year or two you know, why wait? And also then you're gonna have to tape off the countertops and be, you know, mindful of the counters. And then that got me thinking, well, what about my walls? My kitchen walls were like a sagey green color, sagey greenish blue color. And um, I was like, oh, then I'd have to do the walls and I would take up a tape off the walls. So whew, long story short, I chose to do it all. Um, so how did I accomplish it? So I, in my brain, after I got so many people's feedback and their steps and their processes, I was reading on Pinterest, I was kind of researching a little bit. I did not want to have to sand and I was lazy. I will admit, I did not want to have to sand all of my, my cupboards because it's like the 90s oak, a little bit of glassy you know, finish on them. I didn't want to have to sand. I was not going to take all of the stuff out of my cabinets and sand it all down and ignore all the, I mean, deal with all that sawdust. I just, that part scared me. So I wanted to do everything but that. So um, I looked for primers and I talked to the different stores that I went to, um, if they had some sort of primer that would adhere to the glossy varnish a little bit and make it a nice smooth uh, painting um, surface. So Lowe's has a Valspar bonding primer and I will share pictures of the product um, on a post and maybe in some stories, but on here I'm not gonna share them because I have paint like all over the sides of the can, so it's not like you can really see them that well. So um, it's the Valspar like bonding primer. It's white initially, you can get it tinted if you want it to be, but I was going with an ivory cabinet, so the white is perfect underneath that. So I painted every surface of my cabinets and doors inside, outside, all of the cabinet units themselves with this primer. Um, and then it created kind of like a, rough matted surface so the paint would um, adhere to that really well. So I primed everything, <clears throat> backtrack. I washed 
everything. I washed every surface with the TSP, which is a soap, a powder soap, which I also got at Lowe's in the painting department. Um, and it strips all of the residue, grease, any gross, you know, food that was dried to my cabinets. Um, and so I washed everything and I hot, like I got gloves and I used really hot water and I scrubbed with like a scratcher almost to make sure I was getting off all, all residue. And then once I scrubbed it with the TSP water combination, I rinsed everything with water. So my cabinet doors, I literally like rinsed them under the water and then shook them off and like let them like lean up against the wall to dry. And then my cabinet units themselves, I just had a nice hot water rag that I kept rinsing out, but wiping down the cabinets after my TSP combination was done and I really scrubbed them well. Um, the water got so gross and nasty, which just proved A, how dirty my cabinets were, but B, that it was really working and getting off all that nastiness, all the residue. So you had a really clean surface before the priming. So then you let that air dry, that's a nice clean surface. You do the priming coat and then let that dry. And then, and all of this was for me, where like I broke these up into like days. So one night I tackled all of the washing. So I just got that step done. The next night I just did the priming and I got all of that done. And then the next night I did the first coat of paint. And that's honestly guys, like how I kept my sanity through this entire process. I just, I compartmentalized the projects themselves of like what I had to get done and then I broke it up into daily tasks. And all I did was just focus on that one task per day or per night. And once I started, I got my music flowing, I was dancing, I was having a good time, and I just chipped away section by section by section of my kitchen. And I would start around my horseshoe and I would just chip away at each set of cabinet doors. And I'd get it painted and I'd get it nicely edged and I'd move on. And all of a sudden, the kitchen's done and so that that step was completed for the day so personally i had the perfect storm to tackle this project it fell over thanksgiving break so i had thanksgiving day um friday saturday and sunday off of work and then i took off monday for work um which was such a blessing to be able to do that so i had five full days to be able to tackle the project of the cabinets i worked on getting my kitchen repainted monday night and Tuesday night of last week of Thanksgiving week and was able to put that project to bed going into Thanksgiving, which was awesome and was just a huge accomplishment for me. So I felt really good about that. Um, so that's kind of how I got my project done in a efficient, timely manner. I just broke it up into projects and I didn't care how long it would take me or how late I had to stay up. I was going to finish that project that day or that night. So I had some late nights and some early mornings with kiddos, but I drank my coffee and I survived during the day and then I jammed that night. I had my cup of coffee around 10 o'clock and I just went to town and that's how I got this project done. And so getting back on my steps, um, after the priming coat was done, I did my next first coat. And guys, I did an ivory. A lot of people think it's white just through the Instagram pictures, but it's a really, really pretty ivory, bright ivory, a really warm, creamy ivory color. Um, I didn't want stark white for me in my kitchen because my countertops that I went with aren't white. They have ivory tones and beiges and um, grays and creams in it. Um, and so I didn't want stark white because I don't have white in my countertops. So I went with this really soft ivory, it's gorgeous. Um, and so I'm really pleased with it. And then I have a lot of like the Mediterranean bronze or the oil rub bronze hardware. That's what we're going with our, um, our sink faucet. Um, and then we have our slate gray appliances. So personally, I didn't want white cabinets. So I'm going, I went with this really pretty ivory and I'm absolutely in love with it. It's very warm, it's, oh, I love it. So anyways, so I did the first coat of ivory and I rolled every flat surface. Even if my flat surface was just the little bar in between the cabinet doors, I rolled it. I rolled everything I could so the paint would dry as pretty and as smooth as possible. Um, and then I edged things with the with a paintbrush, a really nice paintbrush, and then I would roll over if if I could, I'd roll it over. So the seams were together and they, the paint would dry seamlessly versus like paint strokes and roll strokes. I did it all. So if I did a section, 
I did it all. I edged and then I rolled. I wouldn't edge the whole kitchen and then roll it. So I did it piece by piece all together one at a time. Um, so the paint, like I said, would dry seamlessly and look as really pretty as possible and as professional as possible for doing this by hand. Um, let's see here. So then um, it was nice because I didn't have to worry about the countertop. So I didn't tape off the countertop. So there's paint all over my countertops. I edged all the way up into my, like up into the, into the countertops because I have the luxury of, you know, having that removed. So you, that will take a little bit more time if you're keeping your countertops. But, um, so I did that the first night, my, um, my cabinet doors, I painted the inside. So I had them flipped over on the inside. I primed them once. Then I did two coats of ivory on the inside. And again, I shared that on my Insta stories. I would edge the inside of the square with the paintbrush, but then I would roll everything, all the flat surfaces, even the little edges of the rectangle I was rolling. And then I'd let those dry. That was a two day process. And then I flipped them over and I did three coats on the outside of my cabinet doors just so that they're gorgeous. They're very pigmented with the paint versus like maybe having a little bit of sheer moments on there. I really wanted really solid, um, thick, great color. Um, my cabinet paint is Benjamin Moore. Um, and we have a specialty like, um, decorating store here locally up in Worcester, Martin interiors, if you're local. Um, and so I got Benjamin Moore paint. It was about $55 a gallon, but it's super durable. It cures really nice, solid, hard. It's a really thick paint. So it just cures really nicely, really beautifully. And, um, it, do, it does paint and like you don't see the paint strokes really unless you're like maybe like that close to it but it's beautiful so that is the paint choice I went with with my cabinets was Benjamin Moore I have to reference the color for you guys I'm sorry I will have to look that up and I can put that in the notes um on my page or on my video but um I don't have that color off the top of my head um and then my my walls, I went to Sherwin-Williams and told them my situation. It's a kitchen. So she hooked me up with some sort of durable option. Again, I'll put this in the notes, guys. I'm sorry. The paint cans are so sloppy. So, um, But it was normally a $62 gallon of paint, which I've never paid that much for paint. Um, but I had a 30% off coupon, which they th I think they have that through the end of December. So mental note, guys. Um, however... Um, so 30% off, I think I paid around 40, 45, something for the gallon of paint, but it's high end paint as well. So my gray, I went with a really pretty gray. It's called functional gray. I debated back and forth between what colors of gray to go with. The guys are so many. I had a lighter option in my hand as well, but I've done this in my house so many times where I pick the lighter color and then I have these big open rooms and the walls just look so washed out and don't have very much pigment. And I said, I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna go to all the effort to paint my kitchen and then it not even look like it was painted that much. So I wanted a difference. I wanted it to be warm. So I went with the darker gray, which was called functional gray. There's some really pretty grays out there. There's some really pretty grayishes, which I was debating between going to more of a grayy, beigey color, but I really just wanted it to have some strong pigment. So I went with it. I love it. Sometimes I question if I should have gone a different, a more grazy color, but I'm really happy with it now. Um, so I was from Sherwin-Williams. I got all of my painting supplies at Sherwin-Williams as well. They had some sales going on, plus they had 15% off all your painting accessories. So um, I got a mini roller, and I used a mini roller the whole time. I, I bought a big roller brush, but I never used it. I just used the mini roller on everything, even like the side of my bar kind of part of the, the cabinet. Um, I use the mini roller um, and she was really great I got the 3 8 nap on the little roller she said that would be the best one for the paint um, and I used a little mini roller and then I got a really nice angled angled paintbrush and I, I didn't I didn't skimp out on these guys I'm a cheapo okay I'm very frugal but this was the one thing that I was like I'm not gonna cut corners on I'm gonna spend the money on really great tools and really great accessories so I can have the best finishing finished looking product as possible so I probably spent like 13 or 14 dollars on my paintbrush I spent more you know that type of money on my rollers I just wasn't gonna skimp out on this because I didn't want to cut corners and then it not give me the best product so um I walked out of Sherwin Williams and I had paid like $90, but to me it was worth it because that was an investment in my kitchen and I didn't want it to look, you know, like I cut corners. So then I went to Lowe's after that 
and that's where I got my TSP. The guy at Lowe's was super helpful. I got my TSP there. I got really nice washing gloves because I didn't have gloves before. Um, and then I got my primer there. And I think the primer was $25, $30. I could be wrong, but um, it was definitely affordable. And I have like two thirds of the gallon left. Like it is thick stuff. It's almost like a goopy tar type stuff. It's not, but it looks like that consistency. And I still have so much left of it. So um, I'm sure I'll be using it later. So those were the supplies that I used. So Benjamin Moore cabinet paint, it's like their advanced line. And then I used Sherwin-Williams on the walls and then I used a primer instead of sanding. Um, I'm super pleased with the result. I will share more of the finale once the cabinet doors are back on, the hardware's back on. Um, and then obviously once I get my countertop installed around mid-December, it'll be completely different. My sink and my faucet will get installed then too, which I'm just so excited about. Um, and I think one of the other biggest changes in the kitchen was my windows. Oh my gosh, guys, my windows. I wasn't originally planning on painting my windows white, but then as soon as I had my ivory cabinets, like the windows looked so dark with the oak. And so I taped them off and I primed them with the same primer because my windows were kind of that glossy oak finish as well. And I primed them. I did the first coat of white paint with a um, white interior. It was like a semi-gloss, it's glossy, um, paint that we had bought when we first bought the house to do all of the trim work around the floors because we installed new floors. So then I had raw trim. So I had to paint all that white. So I had leftover white interior paint for that. And that came from Home Depot, but I'm sure every other place has it too. But it's just a really beautiful white, I'm assuming semi-gloss interior paint. Um, and oh my gosh, my windows are transformed. They're beautiful. I feel like I'm in heaven standing at my sink now. It's just this bright white space and it lets the sunlight in and oh. So guys, that, that was a big change for me as well. And I'm just so pleased that I took the extra time to do that step as well. Um, I'm excited. I got to figure out window treatments on that. I might try some little cafe styles. I don't want to like block light, but I also want it to be cozier in there than just those big open windows, which they're beautiful. So I might just leave them open, but I will play around with that. Um, and I think that was my process, guys. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. I would love to share this with you guys. I have loved taking you along on this ride. You guys have been so encouraging. You've been so great. Um, again, I will share pictures of the product that I used. Um, on my Instagram and maybe in some stories, but I wanted to be able to share and communicate the whole process with you guys, really just free flowing this way. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please, please let me know and thank you for watching.